Amanda. Oh, Amanda. Amanda. <laughs> okay, so we have Amanda. Okay, if you want to come closer. <laughs> rivets. I totally <laughs> forgot how to do rivets. Oh. I'm going to start with the pin back today. So here's some samples. Just a basic. What gauge is this? It's 18. So if you go to a 20, can you still? It's a little flimsy at 20. You could if they're tinier. I guess, well, you've actually, because I find it catches, mm. but you've actually filed that one quite nice. Point. Is, this one's thicker. Is that the same? That looks a little I thicker. I think it's the same. Oh. That reminds me I should get some more. Smooth out my. So I'm going to just do the demo with copper, but I don't recommend using copper because it's really soft. It's not going to hold up as well as the sterling silver. And I'm going to use this as my pin. So I'm going to put a pin back on this. Just this piece of textured copper here. And I'm going to use 18 gauge wire. Depending on how big your pin is going to be, I'm going to just snip this much off and it might be more than I need but that will be okay. And then I'm just going to hammer it flat, flatter. Then I'm going to file both ends so they're flat because right now they've been snipped so they kind of pointy. So I'm just going to tighten that handle. So a little peeking above. Flatten that end. something I'll use the hammer just to make a curve this is the back of my, my little sample so I'm bringing it in and I'm going to just flatten these so they're angled straight out I think I'll position this pin here, like that. If it was longer, you might spread them out a little more. I think I'll go with that for today. So you wanted them flat so you have good contact with the base when you're soldering. Maybe I will, like on your piece you'd have your sanding done already. I'm just using a little sample here, but I'm going to scuff the back up a bit before I solder. So now I'm ready to solder. So I'm going to turn the ventilation fan on. We always turn this fan on when we're soldering. That's the main solder area over here. a third arm to hold our piece. So I have it positioned 
position like that, I'm going to flex this both sides. And then I'm going to lift this up and set it on there so I have a good contact. So it's pressing down on it because here it was on the block. So now when I put it on something slightly higher, it's pressing against it. Whereas if I had it in the air and I pushed it against that copper, it's going to have a, it's going to pull back up a little. So this is a good way to get your contact. Why do you flex both sides? I always flex everything, especially when I'm using copper, because metal oxides form and then it just keeps more of it clean. So for today I'm going to use just medium solder and we're going to use the pick. Has everyone used the pick for soldering? Mm -hmm. Have you guys used the pick? A little bit, eh? And then I'm going to flux just a little bit of the wire too. still fanning, I'll place my solder. Make that look so easy. <laughs> <laughs> so the trick is to get it warmer than the solder will want to transfer. So now I'm going to increase my gas a bit. And we're going to avoid the wire and we're getting the base hot. So I'm going to be quite close, but I'll be in the middle. So I'll be kind of right in here and getting that copper up to temperature before I deal with the sides. So as the flux is burning away, you know you're getting close to the flow temperature. I'll go and do this side first. So now that it's getting up there, I can go around my seam area. And I think I need more gas. Copper needs more heat than silver, it seems. that flowed. So I'm getting this area hot. See how I'm avoiding the wire though? And before it cools you might want to lift it so it doesn't stick to the block. too much solder either. If you have too much, it might make a mess. It might run out. And I used a generous amount. I could have used half that amount. Yeah. Yeah. The cooling process will help work hard in it and also kind of give it a memory of being up so that when you do push it down, it comes back up inside here to make it more secure. So the ones we make in class here aren't going to be, you know, as sharp and thin and hard like a commercial pinback. So it's probably not, you know, good for your fine silk shirt or something, but for like a knit, it'd be fine.
So I'm going to move on to riveting now. Did you do a riveting? No. Okay. Um, so there's four styles I'm going to show you. My favorite is the tube. And then there's the wire. And these ones are the same on both sides. And then there's the nail, brass nail, and a balled up wire. So these ones have a front and then the back. Maybe I'll use this brass. <clears throat> so I'm going to rivet this piece onto this piece. So I'm just flattening my metal. These are just pieces from my sample pack from level one. And I'm going to do a tube rivet and then a wire rivet, kind of like I did on here. So what we want to do is on our top sheet, we're going to mark where we're ho the holes are going to be. So we're going to use a, you might use your marker to first establish where that is. And then you'll use a center punch just to do a light tap where your rivets are going to be. And then I'm going to um, drill a pilot hole first in the top piece. So I'll use a tiny drill bit like that. Establishing the center of your rivet. So now I'm going to, you could deburr this first because it's going to create a space or it could scratch your other layer. So I'm going to tape this on to where I want it to go with masking tape. So this way we can ensure that our, our rivets will line up. Like if you have five or six rivets, you want them all to, to match up in the end. Secure it down with tape onto our bottom plate, like so. And then I'm going to go the rest of the way through with this little drill bit. My second layer is brass, so I might need to oil a couple times. Brass is harder. We don't want our drill bit to get hot. I'm going to 
I'll take this little bit off right away so I don't break it. So now my center holes are established. So now I'm going to measure my um, my rivet material with the calipers. So my first rivet is going to be a tube, and that is 1.6 millimeters. So we're going to need to be able to read the caliper in this class. <laughs> so to read it, we're going to use the top because that's the metric. So when it's closed, zero, zero. And then when we open it, when it opens to the very first line, so when that line is on the first line, that's exactly one millimeter space there, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if I open it to the next line, one, two, that's two millimeters open space mm -hmm. here. But if it's in between, so right now it's past one, but not quite at the two. So we're going to look at these little numbers and their lines. And we see that the seven lines up the best. See that seven line lines up, but none of the other ones line up very well. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. See the seven line yeah. lining up? Yeah. So that means it's 1.7 millimeters. <laughs> so see, it's it's more than one, but less than two. Right. That's so right. Okay. we're going to look at these little numbers mm -hmm. and their lines below. You can oh, see that the seven, seven line lines mm -hmm. up, but say the three doesn't. Right. The eight. Barely. Right. I was looking for another seven, but it's just right. whatever. So line this seven line lines, lines up, up with the that. line below. Yep. So that was 1.7. And when I measure this, it's 1.6. Mm -hmm. Tumble it in our magnetic finisher, and that tumbling process will help work harden it and also kind of give it a memory of being up. So that when you do push it down, it comes back up inside here to make it more secure. So the ones we make in class here aren't going to be, you know, as sharp and thin and hard like a commercial pinback. So it's probably not, you know, good for your fine silk shirt or something. But for like a knit, it'd be fine. So I'm going to move on to riveting now. Did you do a riveting? No. Okay. Um, so there's four styles I'm going to show you. My favorite is the tube, and then there's the wire. And these ones are the same on both sides. And then there's the nail, brass nail, and a balled up wire. So these ones have a front and then the back.
use this brass. <clears throat> rivet this piece onto this piece. So I'm just flattening my metal. These are just pieces from my sample pack from level one. And I'm going to do a tube rivet and then a wire rivet, kind of like I did on here. So what we want to do is on our top sheet, we're going to mark where we're ho the holes are going to be. So we're going to use a, you might use your marker to first establish where that is, and then you'll use a center punch just to do a light tap where your rivets are going to be. And then I'm going to um, drill a pilot hole first in the top piece. So I'll use a tiny drill bit like that. Establishing the center of your rivet. So now I'm going to, you could deburr this first because it's going to create a space or it could scratch your other layer. So I'm going to tape this on to where I want it to go with masking tape. So this way we can ensure that our, our rivets will line up. Like if you have five or six rivets, you want them all to, to match up in the end. So secure it down with tape onto our bottom plate, like so. And then I'm going to go the rest of the way through with this little drill bit. My second layer is brass, so I might need to oil a couple times. Brass is harder. We don't want our drill bit to get hot. take this little bit off right away so I don't break it. So now my center holes are established. So now I'm going to measure my um, my rivet material with the calipers. So my first rivet is going to be a tube and that is 1.6 millimeters. So we're gonna to need to be able to read the caliper in this class. <laughs> so to read it, we're gonna use the top because that's the metric. So when it's closed, zero, zero. And then when we open it, when it opens to the very first line, So when that line is on the first line, that's exactly one millimeter space there, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if I open it to the next line, one, two, that's two millimeters open space here. 
But if it's in between, so right now it's past one, but not quite at the two. So we're going to look at these little numbers and their lines. And we see that the 7 lines up the best. See that 7 line lines up, but none of the other ones line up very well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry. See the 7 line yeah. lining up? Yeah. So that means it's 1.7 millimeters. Can I have one more look? So see, it's, it's more than 1, but less than 2. All right. So right, we're going to look at these little numbers mm -hmm. and their lines below. You can oh, see that the seven, 7 line lines mm -hmm. up, but say the 3 doesn't. Right. The 8 barely. Right. I was looking for another 7, but it's just right. whatever. So the 7 line lines, lines up, up with the line, line below. Yep. So it's 1.7. And when I measure this, it's 1.6. So we can... ...tubing. And that's 1.6. So our hole, we want to be the same as the tube or the whatever rivet we're using. So we want it snug. And the wire I'm going to use as well is going to be 1.6. This isn't 1.6. This is 1.6. So I'm going to make my holes for these two. Now that I have my holes done, I'm going to deburr with a larger drill bit. I think I want a larger one. So we're just going to twist the drill bit clockwise with our fingers, and that gets rid of that sharp edge on this side, and I'll get rid of the burr on the other side. Because that burr will prevent the two sheets from laying flat against each other. So when you're making your project, at this point, when you have your holes finished, so maybe your top sheet might be high polished, say. Maybe your bottom sheet will be patinaed. So you're going to have your surfaces completely finished before you start riveting. If you were going to put a pin back on here, if say you're going to combine your riveting project and your pin, I would solder your pin back on first and then do the riveting later so that you're not heating up all your materials. Plus, maybe one is going to have a liver of sulfur, like an oxidized patina on it, and the other might be something different. So you're going to do the soldering before you do the final riveting together. And, um, I forgot what I was going to say. The other thing is, then you want to be careful you don't scuff your work up. You might want to tape around with masking tape. So next I'm going to measure how long I need to cut the rivets. So your rivet material, you want to make sure it's flat on the ends. So I'm just going to 
sure it's flat. I'm just going to use the one side anyway. And this side looks pretty flat. Okay, so we're going to hold both pieces with the caliper to measure the bulk of our material. So this measures exactly two millimeters, so that must be 18 gauge and 18 gauge. You see it's two millimeters? two millimeters exactly. So whatever my material thickness is, I'm going to add a millimeter to that measurement for my rivet length. That way I can have half a millimeter sticking out on the front and half a millimeter sticking out of the back. So I'm going to set my caliper to three millimeters. I'm just going to gently tighten so it doesn't move. So just be careful not to over tighten that screw. And then I'm going to take my Sharpie and I'm going to just butt it up there and mark this side like that. Yeah. Then I'm going to do the same with my other material. And now I'm going to use this thing called a tube holder. So your saw blade goes into this groove, this holds your tube or your wire down, and this opens and closes. And it looks kind of dirty. I'm just going to get a brush. It's not like these shaving brushes come across a shaving brush. <laughs> They're really handy. Okay, so we're going to insert the two. And our, our groove is a little bit wide. It's wider than our saw blade. So I'm going to go closer to the bottom of my line rather than too far up. I'm going to line that up against there. This can come back for me to hold it in place. This can go against it and then this tightens. You see where I have that line? So now I'm going to saw this. So when you're holding this tube holder, I like to hold it like this, and I'm still going to saw in my natural. Right, you know, this way. Have it angled. So I have my saw right on my marker line. And you want to be careful, sometimes they fly once you cut all the way through. So you might want to cut extras. I think something went under the thing.
carpet material. The next thing you would do is just, after you've sawn, just take it out, refile your edge, make sure it's flat, because sometimes you might saw at a slight angle. And then instead of measuring with the caliper again, you just push it against this measurement that we have established in there. So I'm going to cut my wire now. After we've sawn, a little bit of a burr gets left. If you can see that, a bit of a burr gets left mm -hmm. from sawing. Right there, you can see that one. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take the snap-on disc. You could even use just a sandpaper stick. just get rid of that burr. Just go really slow and just get the burr off the edge. I'm going to stand one of my rivets straight up and down on the block, like that. And I'm going to insert it into the back plate first. If it doesn't want to go in, what you can do is you can take the scribe, because we don't want to drill a larger hole, because that would make it too big. But we can take this scribe and just twist it in the hole on both sides. And that just gives it a little bit extra for your tubing or your wire to go through. And then we can, I think I, I don't know which way to go, put my other one in at the same time. So I'm going to stand this one up. And then I'll put my top plate on. I didn't do the uh, scribe on this side, so I'll just do it. Seems like the wire is slightly larger than the tubing. So you want to adjust them so they're half sticking out the top and half sticking out the bottom. Mm -hmm. And you'll need to readjust as we start finishing it. So I think I'll do the tube rivet first. So with the tube rivet, 
We're going to use the, the center punch and the rawhide mallet just to start. We're going to start flaring it out. You want to go slow. So if you flare out one side too much and it's sticking out farther, then you'll have an uneven rivet. It won't come back out the other side. So you're going to just double check that it's even. And you're going to lightly flare out this side. Just readjust again. There's only so far you can go with the center punch. So the rest of it, I'm going to finish off with the hammer. So we're going to use a round headed hammer and we're going to just lightly hammer around that rim. Do a bit on that side, then double check it's even. Do a bit on this side. And just keep finishing it off. So you want to just feel it to see if you're done. If you feel like there's an edge catching, you'll just bring it down a bit more. So I can feel a little bit of a catch. So I'm going around Kind of, I'm not just in the center, I'm going around the edge of it. Also, when you're doing that, you might, because your pieces are all finished and polished and stuff, you might want to put masking tape around on both sides to protect your surface. Even on here, it could scuff. And same with this side, you could put little pieces of masking tape around to protect it. So I think that one feels good. So the other one, we'll just jump right in with the hammer. So do a little bit of flaring, or mushrooming, I guess you would call this. Reposition. Mushroom it out.
you can see why a half a millimeter is plenty of material. You could even go slightly less and it would be all right. You wouldn't want to go any more or it will get kind of messy looking. Any questions? Starting to get ideas about projects. Um, next will be the nail rivet and the balled up wire rivet. Um, so I'll use this. So once again, I'm going to establish on the top surface where my rivets are going to go. I'll use the pilot drill to, and it, if like for this one that are separate, I just went right in with the final drill bit hole because I'm not lining anything up. But if it's you know two or more on a piece, you have to line them up. So I think I'll just cut this one in half and then just do them separately. Yeah, right back. Point three millimeters, so that's the drill bit I will use. 1.3 and my nail. So these nails are called how are you pronounce that? S U S station tube? No. <laughs> um Echelon? Echelon? Echelon pins. I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> but that's the package. <laughs> and although they call them 18 gauge on the package, it's actually 16 gauge when we measure them. And then there are other sizes you can purchase too, I guess. So let's double check. 1.3, so I'll drill all these holes, the 1.3 drill bit, bit dull, this bit, and brass is harder.
They only get dull if they overheat, so. Otherwise, they should cut like butter. <laughs> so now I'm going to deburr everything with this larger drill bit. These ones we don't need to measure the length because we're just going to insert our nail and insert it through the other side. Even though I use the same tool bit, I'm going to use the scribe. And that did the trick. So we're going to push it against the block far in as it will go. And then we're just going to use the snips. So because there's a bevel on these, when you have them flat against here, the bevel allows just enough left on the back to rivet with. So watch your eyes. Hmm? <laughs> This like is flat on, against, flat yeah. on, but it still leaves, because yeah. it bevels up a little, yeah. it leaves just enough just material to, to rivet with. <laughs> so once again, we can finish this off with the round-headed hammer, or we can use flat headed hammer too if we wanted to. Um, the reason you might want to use this hammer is because say you're riveting right near something that's been soldered on the back like a pin. This will reach really close whereas this won't. See how far away that would have to be to reach? This can get right close up to something else. And in this one, you would just, it kind of spreads it out one way and then you can go the other way. Just turn it 90 degrees. And just keep turning it. So, so I can see I'm using this part of my hammer. Uh, I think most of the time it's straight, but maybe near the end I might go down a little to bring my edge down a bit more. Still feels a little rough. And these look really nice um, polished up too. So you can tape around it and then use some compound on a mini buff and do a high polish on the brass. Same with the balled up wire ones, they look really nice high polish too. So this balled up wire, I'm just going to snip a piece off to make it kind of look like the
nail. And we're going to use the uh, snap on sanding disc. And just taper the end to get it through the hole. And this one will use the same snips, but we're going to hammer it. On here it will flatten your ball. Mm -hmm. So we have a little tool in this box here. Insert that, push it in all the way, and then I'm going to use the same snips. Watch your eyes. And I forgot to tell you about eye protection. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then we're just going to hammer it like we did all the other ones. You can either use this hammer or that flat ha headed hammer. So the gravity pulls the ball straight. We're just going to heat the end. <coughs> Excuse me. And I can do the other end too. <coughs> big they will rip off so you want to be careful so I just quenched it and then I can pickle it so you could put this in a magnetic finisher after you pickled it bring it up to a really high polish that's 
one way to get it high polish. I'm wondering how you do it with a yeah, yeah. with a little bit of compound in them. So the one I just did was this one. So I would tape around. It was my good piece because maybe this was all patinaed or something. Then I would take a buff. I think I might have some more over here. A buff or a brush. And I have this compound here that you guys can borrow. It's Fabuluster. Or I have chunks of rouge and gray start in a bag up there with the little brushes or buffs too. So when you're doing this at your bench, you might want to wear a mask because it gets pretty dusty. Or you can pull down the ventilation kind of towards where you're working if it reaches. Try the buff first. Loading up compound. It would have been better had I pickled it first, too, okay. but. You could also get some of it off with a rubber wheel first and then go in with the buffing. So I'm going to put it under hot water and use a toothbrush with detergent on it and get all the compound off. The hot water will help loosen it up. called reactive metals and they have different head styles and different colors. You can get brass, fine silver, black oxide or even gold plated. So this one happens to be the hex one. So it's got a nut, a bolt and a washer and then you would need to get the, um, the wrenches that would match. There's two different sizes. The size I have is the 90 so a little bit smaller so they just screw and unscrew 
kind of like eyeglass screws. And then you could cut the end off after if it's too long. So they're pretty, pretty cute little things. Yeah, they totally are. The miniature, the big